matter what I say or do, no matter what I say or do, then I've been thinking that you're holy. You're on the road and you're holy. everyone and welcome to let's talk africa with me miss pida i hope you're all doing well wherever you are in the world in africa um today i was just talking to one of my friends like i always do and we were talking about black techs <laughs> I know we all can relate to this. Um, I saw a few articles that were talking about it today. I think that's why it really resonated within me to talk about this on today's episode. Um, you know, like, there is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with helping to take care of your siblings, helping to take care of your family back home. But then there comes a time where you have to sit down and think that... Um, uh, if I keep um, giving 90% of myself and not giving uh, and living with 10% of me for me, how am I going to keep on being able to give 90%? I feel like um, there's times where you have to be kind of selfish. No, not that I'm saying you should not help people, but like you have to come to a point where you have to say, okay, let me build my house, okay? Let me build my house and make it. Um, a big house a house that is strong the strong foundation therefore when I have my house I can have people come to my house and stay in my house and help them from there rather than me staying in a in, in, in a not having a house okay not even having um, a decent house to stay um, but helping other people to build their house I don't know if you if that makes sense I feel like as black children if you certainly feel like the firstborn or if you if you leave the country or if you have a a, a job even if it's like a low paying job you're expected to pay like then um everyone sits back and wait for you to pay the rent buy the food pay school fees i have so many friends who are deep in debt because they are helping people back home and like i said there's nothing wrong with that but how do we tackle this issue where now you want to speak to your parents or you want to speak to your siblings to say look guys i really need help and if um because i know someone who tried to commit suicide because they were under so much pressure and they just couldn't take it anymore and the if they try and tell their family back home that look i'm really struggling they were like no like you're in the diaspora how are you struggling when you're in the diaspora we see you posting pictures and doing this so now you don't want to take off us and they like literally um it's not manipulate but like kind of like guilt trip you to even feeling bad for even going to buy a coke in the shops you know and um like and when this guy tried to commit suicide, people were commenting on like, how can he want to commit suicide when he's living in a world where they have all of this stuff? Is it because people are not well educated um, or well informed, not educated, well informed about how diaspora is not the land of milk and honey? It's not Canaan. It's literally the same. Yes, there is there is more developed, there is more opportunities, but at the same time, it's not easy, especially on the black child. Um, I only got to experience racism or experience colorism when I left my country. When I was in Zimbabwe, we never ever experienced that. Like, um, there was a comment again somewhere. <laughs> the internet that was saying that one of the things that president robert uh the ex-president robert mgabe did for the zimbabweans is to give us confidence that we and the um other nationalities or the other colors other races sorry we are all equal there is no one who's higher than anyone if you're white if you're black you're the same i learned with white children i stayed in a neighborhood with white kids and we were all the same if we were playing in the mud we we're playing in the mud we we're eating together and all of that that's one thing that we were given by um the ex-president and i think as we leave um zimbabwe and we go out it's a shock then when you go and racism comes in your face or colorism comes in your face because you're like i thought we we're all the same so then going back to then how do we bridge that gap of the expectations that are expected from you from the family back home and what you're living and some people are literally working four or five jobs to be able to manage like what um to manage what they expected to do so we're still children as well you know we were essentially like it's even worse when you get married you know and it's like the the 
the, the bride, the new wife, is blamed for the son not sending money home anymore because he used to. But hello, he's now got a wife, he's now got kids, he needs to worry about that as well. But still, it's like that. So anyway, let's get this conversation started and I'll see you later. Bye.